You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today, the All-Star break is upon us. I have pre-recorded this show, so I don't know the results of the All-Star game. But what it is, I put out a call over on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball in my story for people to ask questions. So we're just doing a mailbag mailbag show um, uh, for your questions. So, Michael Bolton. Let's get to it. it. Let's get to it indeed. The first question comes from Player Line Pro. He says, thoughts on Gary Harris for Dynasty? Nice, Gary! Specifically, a 12-team, 15-man, 10-keeper. I don't think there's any reason that I would want to keep Gary Harris in that sort of a scenario. It feels... Look, now maybe he does go to another team, but it just... It, that, that is a possibility, and things could change there. But his game was so predicated on high field goal percentage and high steals. That's what really brought on his high ranking. And we know how much that steals can have an influence on fantasy ranking. But if those numbers aren't there, and then if he drops away in shooting, there's no rebounds, there's no assists, it's low volume, low usage. I don't really see him as being a guy who's ever pushing back to that top 50 level, unfortunately, because I do like Gary Harris. I think he's quite a good defender, and he's a really key part of this Nuggets team. But I also don't think that that means that he's going to necessarily be a top 50 sort of a fantasy guy. And again, in your league where you've got uh, 12 teams and 120 people kept across the league, I reckon you're better off taking a higher upside guy because theoretically he'd be your 10th keeper, most likely. And I'd rather take an upside play on that, trade Harris to someone else for an upside sort of a keeper for a guy that might push to the top 70 or the top 60. Someone say like a Jakob Pertl, who I think has got that upside. That's just a random name that I pulled out. But who's got that upside to be that player, even if it never arrives at that level, and who is worse than Harris at the moment. Fred Mano says, what's my thoughts on Malik Beasley? That's a very broad question. Um, I think he looks pretty good in Minnesota. It was good to see that high usage game next to D'Angelo Russell. I think he's a must-roster player across all fantasy leagues. He, a bit like Gary Harris, does have some of those issues in terms of what other supporting stats is he, is he bringing. But in a spot in Minnesota where his usage is going to be high, he's going to be banging in threes. I think that he can be a at least top 110, 100 type of a player. Maybe it pushes high, but I'd like to see more from him in the playmaking department and he's made strides there. And we just need to see a little bit more of that. The steals have also been relatively impressive from uh, Malik Beasley this season. rnbser.e.o. Cool. Don't know what that means. If healthy, what's your prediction today for the finals matchup? The LA Clippers and the Milwaukee Bucks. It's hard to go past those two, those two teams. I know the Lakers are top of the Western Conference. I know the Nuggets are second. I just think the Clippers, when they put it together in a playoff environment, can get over those two teams. Um, I had the Sixers and the Clippers in the preseason. The Sixers have obviously disappointed. Maybe they can still make a, a charge for it. I think there's still a chance they make the conference finals, but it has to be the Bucks. I think, would be my finals matchup. Joshua Lee Aquino. Will Clint Capella hurt John Collins' value? Yes, I've answered this plenty of times. I do believe that it will reduce his field goal percentage, his blocks, and his rebounds. Vegan WTR. A 12-team 9-cat. He's first yeah, first in my league. I assume that's what IML is. I have Jimmy Harden, Anthony Davis. Um, worst player is McGee. Any changes? Sure. McGee's no need to roster him. Just stream the shit out of that spot. Like, as simple as that. Just add these guys off the wire. It's almost... It's, it, actually, no. It is literally impossible for me to tell you if there's any changes you should make on your team. But JaVal McGee is not a rosterable player. P3D dot Roach 1U. Geez, Instagram names are terrible. PJ Washington, rest of season. No, I, I don't really think there's any point in a 12-team league holding on to him. He'll be better than what he currently is, no doubt. But what's his actual upside? He has regressed pretty significantly since the beginning of the season. The shot at the, the field goal percentage is poor. We're lacking peripheral numbers. Uh, I think he actually sees maybe a smaller minute load if they get Cody Martin back after the All-Star break. He's 139th this season, PJ. To, uh, 181st, 185th, sorry, over the last two months. So yeah, not a 12-team league guy. 
Justin Wong, he says, what round will Zion Williamson be projected for next season? He will almost assuredly be at worst a second round pick. And I think that he will go in the 12 to 14 sort of a range. So he might be a first round guy. People will froth over him. And they'll see what Luka Doncic did, what Trey Young did this season to become first-round players. And I would be stunned if in majority of drafts someone didn't take a flyer on Zion at the end of the first round. Now, we're going to get a fully healthy Curry. We're going to have Kyrie coming back, hopefully healthy, although people will be very loath to take a risk on him. Kevin Durant will be returning. I don't know where John Wall fits in there. Actually, I do. John Wall doesn't fit in the first round, but maybe people look at him in that area. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see how all those things line up. But I think Zion will be a, a pretty popular pick in the first round of drafts next year. The next bunch of questions. Uh, let's have a look what we got uh, from Jim Russell. Good name. Should I trade Ja Morant for Jalen Brown and McCall Bridges in a keeper league? I would not be giving away Ja Morant, a potential top 20 player for those two guys who will never sniff the top 20, in my opinion. that Absolutely no way do you trade Ja Morant in that scenario. Kojo Man 1, Chrissy Middleton and Jonas Valanciunas for Nikola Jokic. Give me Jokic. He is, as I detailed uh, on Friday's mini show, the top the second best player over the last two weeks. He is rolling. He's probably going to be a top 10 guy the rest of the way. So no, you don't do that. Justin Schluter says, is Alfred Payton a sell high? Yes. And he says, then he says, never mind. Yes, I did talk about that on the sell high podcast. So yes. L Germany, Germany, Annie 17. Cool. Thoughts on Yusuf Nurkic. I've said this plenty of times as well. And it is staggering. Oh, it's not staggering. I find it interesting to me, the amount of people that will follow me on Instagram or follow me on Twitter who just never listen to the podcast. So that's interesting as well. Um, thoughts on Nurkic. Don't bother. He's had a calf strain in his first practice back from a broken leg. There is absolutely no reason for them to push him uh, on that broken leg. They've got a capable center who's playing well, Hassan Whiteside. So he comes in and plays 16 minutes a night, 17 minutes a night. Maybe he gets to 20 minutes a night. He rests back to back. He'll be shaky on that leg. Absolutely no worries about me just forgetting it. Don't worry about it. Just don't worry about Yusuf Nurkic. Do not roster him. S. Lelakidis, hold McCall Bridges the rest of the way? Yes, I think you absolutely have to. I think he's a, a really, really strong chance to be a top 100 guy the rest of the way. Rohit J. Coelho, can you do a show on how to choose players to retain in Dynasty? Well, that's very non-specific, but also a show like that, it's just, you, you can't, I can't give that advice. I can't say, well, you must always pick this guy in this scenario because it's very, very different depending on what your team looks like, what your rules are. There is just no way to give that sort of specific information, unfortunately. Uh, Said Poole says, Lord Alfred for CJ McCollum, good trade. Well, it depends what you need because you're going to be losing a lot of steals. You're going to be losing a lot of assists and you're going to be gaining a lot of points and a lot of threes. And this is just an overarching thing with all fantasy basketball trade discussions. It really depends. That could be a absolutely shitful trade. It could be the best trade you do. It could make both teams significantly worse. It could make both teams significantly better. That is how trading works in fantasy basketball. And again, you're just trading categories for categories. It's not about best overall in a vacuum because literally that does not exist in fantasy basketball. It is not something that actually means anything. All right, let's have a look at the next bunch of those questions coming through. Nick James 27 says you. Cool. Steve is the best for nine. I, I actually don't know what that means because I did put the you meme up in the Instagram story. Shout out to my uh, to my partner, Sally, for that uh, suggestion. So yes, she'll appreciate the shout out. Steve is the best for. Cool. That's a... Uh Maybe you are the best. Nine cat, head-to-head, 12-10 league. I'm in first place. Is Victor Oladipo a hold or should I go with Kevin Herter? I think you just hold Oladipo. You're in first place. No harm in holding on to him. His upside is higher than Herter, so you just hold on. Al Matador with a zero. Trying to flip Johnny Collins in head-to-head category. Would Aiton be a good return or Jim Butler? Either of those would be an absolute win, a huge steal. Uh, Aiton obviously fills similar categories to Collins, so I'd probably take him, but either of those would be a win. Fet J408, you have a nicknames for a bunch of blokes, but what's your nickname? It's boring as shit. It's just Lloydy. Like there's nothing exciting there. No one has uh, come up with anything better than that. Mike Wish underscore, first in a 10 team league, worth stashing Steph. Yes, you're first, so yes, why not? Let's see what happens over the next couple of weeks. Maybe you move on, but you've got some buffer in your first spot, so hold on. Leon and Emily. I don't know if this is Leon or Emily. I'm going to guess it's probably Leon asking the question. Whiteside or Drummond from here on? Now, that is a really interesting question. Of course, um, Drummond's second game with Cleveland was not ideal. We saw uh, him get those couple early fouls and Tristan Thompson came in. I think that's causing a little bit of panic between people. Um, I would probably have Whiteside ahead, but again, it does depend a little bit 
you're going to get uh, more points from Drummond and less blocks, but more steals from Drummond as well. So it does depend a little bit on what you need. But over the course of the season, Drummond's 11th and Whiteside is 13th. So we're, we're you know, splitting hairs there. But I think that we're going to see Drummond you know, maybe not playing those 35 minutes a night that he was playing. And maybe that pushes down to 32, 31, depending on how many blowouts the Cavs have to endure. So I would take, uh, as I said, I would take Whiteside most likely in that scenario. Leon and Emily with another question. Stash Holmes. This is very dependent, Leon and Emily. Or maybe this is Emily, this one. She's a big Rashawn Holmes fan. Um where are you in your standings? Because Holmes is going to be out for weeks. He might not come back at March. He might not come back at all. Do you have an injured reserve slot? If you're in sixth spot in the standings, then no, you can't afford those zeros. If you're in first or second, then yes, you can. But then if he doesn't come back by the playoff start, you might have to cut bait. Finding Jet. Who's your shutdown candidates? Players that get injured. Players that aren't injured, we just don't... Unless we're talking about the last four games of the season, players who aren't injured... Don't get shut down. Shutdown is the biggest myth that everybody overreacts to. Like People ask me questions in November. I probably should trade away. Shutdown candidate. Like If players get hurt, they don't play. It's as simple as that. And yes, teams that are bad at the end of the season, if a player is hurt and maybe they play through it, they're a little bit extra cautious. But again, they have to be hurt in the first place for this to happen. So I can't go out and say, well, this guy's going to get hurt and this guy's going to get hurt. Shutdown candidates, is the, it's just something that is absolutely over fixated on and if you make your moves based on shutdown candidates much like if you make all your moves based on trade candidates you'll end up losing it's just as simple as that in my opinion all right the next bunch of questions is johnny collins a sell high before capella starts playing answered that one already standard fantasy playoffs who is the most valuable player for the total playoffs um Again, it really does depend because if you if I say that Harden, and it's almost definitely going to be Harden, is the most valuable player during that time, um, you know, does that does that matter? Like if you then have Davis in that time frame, like does it really matter who the, the number one guy is? It is quite dependent. And again, we, we as humans are so focused on rankings and who's here and who's just below when in essence, everything's about groupings and tiers and all that sort of stuff. But Harden's the number one player. He's going to be the number one player, I would imagine, uh, per game as we move forward. The next question comes from uh, Abo, Abos Noyan. Guaranteed a playoff spot. Should I hold Wendell Carter? Will he be brought along slowly? I'd have to imagine, yes, he will be brought on a little bit slowly, but you're in a playoff spot, so why not? You've got that time up your sleeve. He could be back just after the All-Star break. It seems more likely that we're looking at uh, end of February, but yes, just hold on. He's a good player. Uh, Abbas Noyan also says, is it an issue to have three players from the same roster on your team as the fantasy playoff start? No, I do not believe that that is a problem at all. It's more of a problem to have a roster that doesn't make sense statistically versus to have three players on one team. Now, if you've got six blokes from one team, then that's obviously somewhat of a concern. Three, not a problem at all. Uh, a Queen Whistle, uh, that question's not relevant. Curtis McLeod, Wendell Carter Jr. or Clint Capella? Has to be Capella, in my opinion. Uh, significantly better than Carter all season. And yes, they're both injured at the moment. I think Capella probably returns before Carter does. Uh, it has to be Capella to me. Stealth V10. Should I pick Luke Kennard up from waivers? Well, that, again, is a very dependent question. Who are you dropping? Like, who's your worst player? I think Kennard can be interesting, but Derek Rose, Reggie Jackson, Bruce Brown, Svima K. Luke, Luke Kennard. Like, they are all players who are in that backcourt. And yes, they could play Kennard at small forward, but we know Dwayne Casey loves him some Tony Snell. So where is Kennard going to fit? He is the best player out of that group, the best prospect out of that group, the biggest part of their future. So I think he gets close to those 30 minutes. But we don't even really have an update on when he's coming back with this knee injury. It's just consistent knee soreness, which is a real worry. Who you would drop is important. Uh, I wouldn't prioritize Kanata as, man, I've got to have this guy on my team because I'm not sure he's going to be a top 80 or top 90 guy, but he can be valuable. Nickname 808, what's the shutdown risk for Love now that Cavs have Drummond? Is he slightly safer? I think that Kevin Love is a real chance to get injured. Uh, we've already seen this now with his Achilles soreness, and they have no reason to risk any... No one has any reason to risk Achilles soreness. I don't think that having Drummond really impacts whether Kevin Love's going to get hurt or not or whether they're going to be cautious with his injuries. So I would say that him missing games down the stretch is a guarantee. I don't know how many there's going to be. But again, he's not going to come back after All-Star break and they're just not going to play him saying, Kev's gone home for a rest. We'll see you all in October. Like, that just not is not something that's going to happen. All right, let's look. The next, uh, next bu uh, bunch of questions up here. For us to peruse, 
Is Nerlens Noel a hold-in 12 team? Do you need his defensive numbers? Then yes. The last couple of games, especially the last one where he did have some foul trouble, was not ideal. But yes, I, I think he is a bit of a hold. Il, uh, Al Calabresi, 10. Joe Ingles or Larry Nance in nine category league? Well, before the Kevin Love Achilles soreness came up, it would have been Ingles. Uh, I think we just got to grab Nance at this point and let's just see where this goes with Love. But Ingles is, is a drop candidate with low upside, so you can move on. H. Schweng. Tom Bryant, a drop if punting field goals and turnovers. I'm weak in rebounds and blocks also. So if you're weak in rebounds and blocks, um, Bryant would actually help you in those areas. He, field goal percentage is one of his biggest strengths, so that's a, a different one. Turnovers I don't give a shit about. Um, if he's likely to come back next game, uh, I don't see why you would have held him and drop him now. So I'm going to say yes. Hold on. Mike, 1,000 KR. Is Curry coming back in time for fantasy playoffs? It depends when your playoffs are, but it looks like the beginning of March is when Steph is coming back. Are you dropping none for Vanilla Tice in a 12-team head-to-head points league? Air Rick 214. Rick, I have no idea because I don't know what your points league scoring system is. The, when you've got a points league, the number one way to be able to tell if a player is worth looking at is what do they average? What do they average for the season? What do they average over the last two weeks? Work out if there's any reason why they're up or down in those points over that time frame and then go from there. Tice's numbers, they look pretty sustainable from what he's doing. But in your points league, I don't know if that means 20 points per game or 35 points per game or 120 points per game. And none, he's shooting terribly, but you don't have any sort of percentage penalty, then he's okay. I would say that none that Tice's value feels a little bit more secure than none, but that your league could really skew things towards a guard versus a big man. Jacob Buss says, is it worth it to take a hit on value in trades at the fantasy deadline to improve playoff schedule? It depends, Jacob, because we talk people talk playoff schedule and they say he's got 12 games across the fantasy playoffs. He's got 11 games in the fantasy playoffs. That's all well and good, but the fantasy playoffs aren't one three-week competition. You've got to play each week individually. So a... Uh, a team that plays 4-4-2 four, four, in terms of their schedule is very different to a team that plays 3-3-3, three, 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 even though the 4-4-2 four, four, team plays one more game. Because when you get to the playoffs, it's worse. Or the final matchup, it's worse. How confident are you? Now, I think in value, and value is a term that gets bandied about in fantasy so often, and it really means very, very little in comparison to what people think it means. But... When you're looking at trades, I think taking a hit in value to actually strengthen your team in the punt categories or the strong categories you're strong in is way more important than you know, supremely looking at schedule. And the other thing with schedule is schedule is important for the days that they play. No point having your 13th best player play four games every week in the fantasy playoffs if none of those games or one of those games per week is a quality game. So you're sitting there, look at this bloke, four games a week and you play him once. Like that is pointless. So it is really important to take days when they play into consideration equally in terms of volume, equally in terms of categories. Um, Mono Rom Chim, Luke Canard worth a pickup, cover that one. Craig 3 do you watch Willem Powerfish? I have literally never even heard of that. Uh, if that is, is that even a real thing? I don't even know if that's a real thing. Um, so I'm going to say no, I don't watch that. Let's go to the next bunch. Uh, is Wendell Carter, uh, Wendell Carter a stash in uh, 10 man for Lloyd Kang? Uh, I think 10 is, is probably a little bit shallow there for him. Laid Steve's 24. If you had to sell one of these two centers, Embiid or Jokic, sell high on for the playoffs. Like, why do you have to sell one of them? If you've got both of them, they're obviously both on your roster. So, why do you need to sell them? Jokic will be better. So, I would uh, probably sell off Embiid, but why do you have to sell one of them? Alexander, 28K, better rest of season. Beal or Jimmy Butler, my playoffs start March 16. They, that seems really late for those playoffs, guys. Your playoffs should never, never, never exceed past March. Um, better rest of the season. That's, a, that's an interesting one. Uh, I would probably have Butler marginally ahead of Beal. Now, Beal does have... Uh, I've projected him to play three more games for the rest of the year, but with your playoffs at that time, it, it really is quite dependent on um, on how... when how, I mean, how many weeks? You've got a three-week playoff happening. That's uh, that's important to note as well. Now, of course, we can't predict injuries, but these guys have both had pretty de- decent injury problems throughout not only their career, but in this season as well. So you said your playoff start. Let's double check when you said your playoff start. On uh, March 16th, I believe March 16th is yep, week 20, uh, 21. So if you look at what the Heat play during that week, let's have a look. The Heat play 3-3-4 uh, three, three, over that time frame. The Wizards in that time, play, time frame, 4-4-3. Four, four, so that's one more game for Beal. 
Is that enough to push him over the edge for Butler? But then in, with the guys at the top end there, quality games don't matter because you are still playing them. But it does impact other guys on your roster as to whether you can actually get those bulk games in. And getting one more game of Bill versus Butler might actually be offset by having enough low volume or guys playing on low volume days to get that extra three games played versus your opponent or in that scenario. So that, that is important to note as well. I will probably, even with the one more game, I would probably take... Um, Jimmy Butler over Beal. I just think that um, there is a chance that when you get, especially because your playoffs are running so late, when we're talking about running them into um, uh, into April, that Beal will play you know, 27 minutes a night in that first week of April. And that's a real worry because that would be your final matchup. MP91, I dropped Cantor. Bad move? No. Good move. Louis, Louis Reed Wood. Would you, would you take between Paul Millsap and Christian Wood? Louis, this is not even a remotely a close answer. It is Christian Wood without even any question or any doubt at all. No salary cap. Is Malik Monk breaking out? Is it time to pick him up? Yes, add him. Is Derek Rose a standard league guy, the Shark Slayer? Uh, he has been. Uh, it was obviously a horrible return from injury for Rose, but I think we've got to consider him at least a hold at this point. Zobi for Shobi. For someone in first place, who are some injured guys you'd look to stash to ball out in March? Well, the number one there is Steph Curry. Of course, he's going to be coming back in March, and if you can add him, that's fantastic. You look at someone like maybe Otto Porter, maybe Larry and maybe Wendell Carter, who are all coming back in that time. Clint Capella, I'm sure he's not available, but if he is, he's a guy you look at. I'm not looking at John Wall. Of course, we know that. We're not looking at Yusuf Nurkic as an option. It's these other guys who are almost destined to come back and have some sort of an impact. Let's move on now to the last set of questions for this mailbag podcast. Um, where are we? Kitsis Mission. How often do you restart a podcast halfway through? Almost never, unless I forgot to hit record, which again, hardly ever happens. I really don't restart things. I really don't edit parts out that I speak. It's just me. I start talking and I go and that's it. And so yeah, how often? Never. Jack Dam is the engine. No, not the engine, the tank. Thomas Bryant, a better hold on injured reserve or, or than Wendell Carter at points league 1210. Well, I think Bryant's going to be back beforehand, so yes. And then once he's back, you activate him and you can add Carter in. Wayne Law, should I trade Christian Wood for someone ranked above 80 or just hold for No, someone ranked above 30. That's where you should look. If you can get that back, that's fantastic. Otherwise, just hold because he could remain a top 50 player, would he? Top 80, no way. Ian Sanchez, 12, last question. Sell PG-13. Sure, if you get a better player back. If you don't, then hold him. This is how all of this sort of stuff should work. I'm not like, man, I've just got to get Paul George off my team. Give me anything. Who's got a Wes Wundu? I'll take him back for Paul George. You just don't sell players for the sake of selling them. If you get a good player back, a better player back, absolutely go. Knock yourself out. Make, make the most of it. If not, then, oh well, you hold on and you deal with a guy who's really, really good. Also, George is struggling a little bit at the moment, so why sell him when the value is perhaps a little bit lower than usual? Guys, that'll do it for my mailbag podcast. Don't forget, subscribe, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked on Fantasy Basketball. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya. <laughs>